Welcome to today's webinar on managing your supply chain team. This is Barbara Lamphere. Greg is on travel and will be with us again next month for our webinar on linking supply chain management to coverage. But today I'm joined by someone many of you may know, Dominique Swinkles, Executive Manager of People That Deliver. We will be hearing from her in a bit later in the webinar. As a reminder, we will have time at the end of the webinar presentation for questions. If you have a question, please use the QA function in Zoom by clicking on the QA button at the bottom of your screen. Please avoid using the chat function for questions. Today's webinar, Managing Your Immunization Supply Chain Team, is the third webinar in our series. We want to welcome those who are joining us for the first time and thank all of you for investing your time to learn more about supply chain leadership. In our first two webinars, we focused on two very important activities of immunization supply chain leaders, strategic planning for immunization supply chains and using data to manage supply chain performance. The strategic plan guides immunization supply chain managers in the implementation of the interventions that can improve supply chain performance. While data can help us understand how effective these interventions are and where more attention is needed. Today, we turn our attention to the people who manage immunization supply chains, you as leaders and the teams you manage. Let's start by reviewing the objectives for this webinar on managing your immunization supply chain team. We will start by talking about who supply chain leaders are and their role in guiding the work of the immunization supply chain. We will then address what it takes to create and maintain an immunization supply chain team. In our last webinar, we looked at data review teams and how they are formed at different levels in the supply chain with the purpose of using data to identify problems and their root causes and taking action to solve those problems. In this webinar, we will look at immunization supply chain teams and what makes them effective. To achieve our third objective, looking at immunization supply chain competencies and how to build those competencies, I will be interviewing Dominique about the work of people that deliver. So let's now get started. To run effectively, immunization supply chains require effective, skilled, and motivated leaders at all levels. The leaders must be technically competent in various essential supply chain functions and should also be empowered to make decisions that positively impact supply chains and the availability of vaccines and other health products. Who are supply, immunization supply chain leaders? They may be the supply chain managers directing activities at the national level or the local EPI focal person at the district or the nurse at a local health facilities. Leaders can be found at all levels of the immunization supply chain. Let's do a quick poll to see how many of you consider yourselves supply chain leaders and specifically immunization supply chain leaders. So I'm going to launch a poll now and answer these two questions. Are you a supply chain leader? Are you an immunization supply chain leader? Please cast your vote so we can see who's in the room with us. Okay, just a few seconds more till all of you have voted. All right. Well, it seems that the majority of everyone who's joined us today is a supply chain leader. If you're working to manage supplies, 
then you are probably a supply chain leader. And about half of you are actually working in immunization supply chain. So let me show this, share the results with you so everyone can see. Okay, moving on. Let's take a few minutes to look at the activities and the responsibilities of immunization supply chain leaders. Leadership in immuniza immunization supply chain is about these seven activities. Demonstrating personal qualities as a role model to your team, working with others within your team and with external stakeholders who contribute to the success of your immunization program. At the heart of the work is managing supply chain services and continuously assessing the performance of the supply chain and improving that performance. It is the role of the leader to use information about the needs of the health system that the supply chain supports and set the direction of the supply chain to best meet those needs while working with the immunization supply chain team to create a vision for the supply chain organization and develop and implement the immunization supply chain strategy. Let's take a few minutes to get into more detail on the actions of immunization supply chain leaders. When we talk about demonstrating personal qualities, we are talking about how leaders draw upon their values, their strengths, and their abilities to deliver high standards of service. To do this, leaders must demonstrate effectiveness in developing self-awareness by being aware of your own values, principles, and assumptions, and by being able to learn and grow from experiences. As a leader, you must be able to manage yourself by organizing your work, personal life and needs while taking into account the needs and priorities of others. Leaders continue their personal development by learning through participating in continuing professional development and from experience and feedback. They must also act with integrity by behaving in an open, honest, and ethical manner. Effective leadership requires individuals to work with others in teams and networks to deliver and improve services. To do so, you must demonstrate effectiveness in developing networks by working in partnership with donors, suppliers, service users, and colleagues within and across the supply chain. Building and maintaining relationships by listening, supporting others, gaining trust, and showing understanding. Encouraging contributions by creating an environment where others have an opportunity to contribute and working within teams to deliver and improve commodity availability. At the heart of being an immunization supply chain leader is the management of supply chain services. An effective immunization supply chain leader focuses on the success of the organization in which they work. As an effective leader, you need to plan and actively contribute to plans to achieve supply chain goals. You must manage resources by knowing what resources are available and use your influence to ensure that resources are used efficiently. An important aspect of the leadership role is managing people, providing the staff and your team with direction, working with them to review their performance and motivating them to continuously improve their performance and the performance of the supply chain, holding yourself and your team accountable for supply chain outcomes. Effective supply chain leadership requires individuals to make a real difference to people's health by delivering high quality vaccines and medicines and by making improvements to supply chain. To do so, as a leader, you must demonstrate effectiveness in ensuring uninterrupted service by assessing and managing supply chain risk and balancing economic considerations with the need for innovation. You should be critically evaluating the supply chain and activities of your team by being able to think analytically, conceptually, and to identify where services can be improved, working individually or as part of a team. 
As a leader, you encourage improvement and innovation by creating a climate of continuous service improvement and facilitate transformation by actively contributing to change processes that lead to improved vaccine availability and improved health outcomes. Effective leadership requires individuals to contribute to the strategy and aspirations of the supply chain organization and act in a manner consistent with its values. Leaders can do this by identifying the context for change, by being aware of political, budgetary, administrative, and other factors that need to be taken into account when proposing a change. Applying knowledge and evidence to system challenges in order to identify opportunities for supply chain improvements by making decisions using data and your best judgment and evaluating impact by measuring outcomes and taking corrective action where necessary to be held accountable for your decisions. Effective leadership involves creating a vision for the future and communicating this within and across the supply chain. This requires individuals to demonstrate effectiveness in developing the vision of the organization, looking to the future to determine the direction of, the, of your supply chain organization. Influencing the vision of the wider healthcare system by working with partners to ensure that that supply chain vision is in line with the larger healthcare vision. Communicating the vision and motivating others to work towards achieving it and embodying that vision by behaving in ways that are consistent with the vision and the values of the organization. As we discussed in the first webinar, effective leadership involves delivering the strategy by developing and agreeing on strategic plans that place vaccine availability and client satisfaction at the core and ensuring that these are translated into achievable operational plans. This requires individuals to demonstrate effectiveness in framing the strategy by identifying strategic options for, supply chain, for the supply chain organization and drawing upon a wide range of information, knowledge, and experience. Developing the strategy by engaging colleagues and key stakeholders implementing the strategy by organizing, managing, and assuming the risks of the organization, and embedding the strategy by ensuring that strategic plans are achieved and sustained. This all seems like a tall order, but you don't need to be a superhero to be an immunization supply chain leader. You do need to keep the vision for what you're trying to achieve always in mind, and make the best use of your supply chain team to achieve the goals, priorities, and objectives of your immunization strategic plan. Let's now turn our attention to how, as a leader, you can develop and support your supply chain team. We'll look at an example of a successful supply chain team to learn what it takes to create and manage your immunization supply chain team. This example comes to us from Ethiopia. Mikele Hub is a branch of the Ethiopia Pharmaceutical Supply Agency, EPSA. In July 2018, a supply chain system strengthening and quality team, SCSS and QT, was created in Mikele as one of 18 national teams that work with EPSA hubs. Since its inception in 2018, the McKelley team has been able to realize supply chain improvements through their work. One example of their success as a team has been in reductions of stockout rates as seen here in this graph for all health products from August 2018 to June 2019. The dashboard reports on a set of 118 indicator products out of more than 1,000 products managed by EPSA, eight of the tracer products being vaccines. And here we look at the vaccine-specific situation. 
For vaccines, there have been zero stockouts at the hub for over a year since the team was instituted. Prior to the team creation, vaccine stockouts were at about 5%. So what has made this team so effective? Team effectiveness has been developed by creating, oops, I'm sorry, I have the wrong page in front of me. By identifying a team, forming a team, a, lead, a leadership identified a group of people with a variety of skills. The team consists of planners, decision makers, team experts, experienced logisticians, and data analysts. So in creating the team, leadership identified the appropriate people to be on the team. Next, they worked with the team to develop shared goals and a vision for its teamwork and a data use roadmap. They identified indicators and prepared recognition plans for good performing individuals, facilities, and institutes. The team conducts regular monthly meetings using the innovate, do, review approach we discussed in the last webinar. They've also built the capacity of the team by providing training in leadership, data use, and change management. Team effectiveness has been developed by creating a sense of urgency on the stockout rates, as we saw in our slides with the graphs on it, and also by focusing on customer satisfaction. Improvement of stockout rates has united the team on one common goal. That was their first focus in creating the team was to reduce those stockout rates. The team also regularly, regularly conducts customer satisfaction surveys, which are completed by health facilities that look at satisfaction on filling the order, product quality on receipt, responsiveness, cost, communication, and other aspects of customer service. Team effectiveness has also been developed by forming a po powerful coalition team. The team has conducted its meetings as planned for 16 months, and the leadership has been successful in ensuring that team members from all important management units, including the regional health bureaus and other parts of the system attend those meetings. So all the right people attend those meetings. They also are, have been effective in communicating their vision. Day-to-day -day team communication is enhanced by the use of data dashboards that are accessible to team members at EPSA, at regional health bureaus and zonal health departments. This access to the same information across facilities has facilitated problem solving and speeds decision making. Though the vision of the team was developed at the time of team formation, team leaders reaffirm the vision frequently as they recognize the importance of sh a shared vision to team success. As part of the work, the leaders are also communicating the team's vision to the regional health bureaus and districts to encourage the support of these units for team activities. The leaders in the team have identified barriers that have halted the team's planned activities, such as bureaucratic approvals, and have been proactive in securing what is needed. In addition, the team has worked closely with local government units to ensure they understand the performance indicators for the system so that they can support the work to improve performance. So they've gotten district um, managers as well as regional health bureaus and zonal health departments to really work together to achieve um, improved performance. They are generating short-term wins and, and sustaining changes. Based on the team's data use roadmap, the McKelley team has exceeded the target for inventory accuracy and celebrated the result and provided recognition to one of the team members who contributed significantly to the success. 
To help sustain changes, leaders are working with performance review teams at the hub on how supply chain indicators are reported through EPSA's m and &E system. Members of the McKelly team have received leadership training, which has empowered them to make changes in the supply chain system and to enable them to better lead and sustain the team. Leadership training was provided to all team members after the team was established, and this has led to shared leadership and more effective team meetings. The McKelly team was selected by the national level to present its successes and challenges and way forward at national review meetings. The leaders are motivated, motivated by the changes they observe at the level of data use, the improvements on KPIs, and the national recognition given to the team. Congratulations to the McKelley team. Let's summarize what it make, takes to make an effective supply chain team. Shared vision and goals. Establishing a shared vision is critical. It coordinates the actions of individual members toward agreed upon goals. This vision should be easily understood, understood and communicated and should support the team's effort to provide customer service. Shared leadership. Successful teams develop leadership skills and shared responsibilities, which allow team members to proactively address change. Continuous learning and development. Ongoing training and development for team members is also critical. This systematic training breeds a feeling of team spirit. Each member equally feels important to the team and responsible for improving both technical and interpersonal skills. A customer focus. Effective teams pay attention to customers and focus on customer requirements, satisfaction, and complaints. By using customer satisfaction surveys and performance goals, teams can continuously improve performance. Feedback and data. Successful teams meet often to review current performance and develop improvement plans using clear performance measures. Now that we have spent some time talking about leadership and teams, we are going to turn our attention to what it takes for an individual to perform well on the job. It's your job as a supply chain leader to support the work of individuals on your teams. You need to ensure you're getting the best performance you can from the people you work with. People that, that deliver has created a theory of change for human resources for supply chain management. This colorful diagram summarizes that theory of change. Building off of the models of human performance technology first developed in the 1970s, we will see in this diagram the four prerequisites for optimal work performance, staffing, skills, working conditions, and motivation. Let's look at these in a bit more detail. The first prerequisite is staffing. To ensure optimal work performance, all critical supply chain positions and or competencies need to be filled. This means that the supply chain organization must have sufficient budget for staff, has the ability to recruit quality candidates, and has an adequate pool of workers. The pre second prerequisite is skills. Workers need to be able to apply their skills as appropriate at every level of the supply chain. In order to do this, they need to fully understand their roles and responsibilities, have adequate technical and managerial competence, and leadership skills. Working conditions must be safe and clean, provide up-to-date tools and equipment, and offer a favorable social and emotional environment to support staff performance. 
And finally, staff must be motivated to do their jobs. Good performance should be supported and recognized as we heard about in the Ethiopia example and in our last webinar. Workers need to have a sense of ownership and pride in the role they play in ensuring the supply chain performs and understand that what they do in supply chain has an impact on the health of the people of their region of their nation. If these four factors or prerequisites are in place and are of good quality, then work performance is optimized and the goal of commodity availability and positive health outcomes can be achieved. We will now turn our attention to supply chain competency with those competencies, what those competencies are and what are the opportunities to develop those competencies. I would like to now more formally introduce my guest for this webinar, Dominique Zwinkels. Dominique is the Executive Manager of People That Deliver Initiative. She has 22 years of experience in managing programs with a focus on health supply chain management, livelihood, food security, and nutrition. Since 2016, Dominique has been responsible for the management and overall performance of PTD, People That Deliver. Prior to PTD, she worked for 10 years on the HIV AIDS supply chain for JSI at the Partnership for Supply Chain Management, which procured and delivered essential life-saving medicines and related commodities to HIV and AIDS programs around the world. Welcome, Dominique. To start off, can you please give us an idea of how PTD started and what it's all about? Hello, Barbara, uh, and hello to everyone on the webinar. Thank you for having me today. Um, so the people that deliver, or as, as you rightly said, the PTD for short, was established in 2011 when 79 institutions came together and pledged their support and action to strengthen, strengthen the capacity of the health supply chain workforce while promoting the professionalization of the supply chain role within the broader health system. We found that although hundreds of millions of dollars in commodities may flow through a country's health supply chain system, the critical strategic function of the supply chain within health systems is rarely acknowledged. We also saw then, and often remains the case now, that the health supply chain workforce lacks the technical and managerial competencies to perform optimally or the empowerment to affect supply decisions and policies. Many low to middle income countries have an insufficient number of adequately sta trained staff, particularly logistics staff, to manage health supply chains. Countries also face significant gaps in technical capacity and knowledge among their existing health supply chain staff. And this is often due to the lack of experience or formal training either through supply chain and logistics degree programs or in-service training for staff. Moreover, many low to middle income countries also lack a professionalized supply chain occupational category formed either via formal education or through the civil service structure. This professionalization is critical to embedding a workforce with specific supply chain competencies in the health system. PTD therefore advocates for a systematic approach to human resources for health supply chain management. And this is based on the global recognition that without trained professionals to manage health supply chains, drugs and other health supplies do not reach the patients who need them. Since 2011, we've been working hard and we've seen an increased focus on systematic approaches to HR capacity development and the professionalization of supply chain management cadres. We have increased global recognition of the importance of supply chains, and we've also developed numerous tools and resources and engaged several countries supporting them through our member organizations. Today, we are a global alliance focused on providing technical leadership in human resources for supply chain management. We are governed by a board representing seven constituencies 
from donors and aid agencies, countries to implementing partners, academic institutions, professional associations, and private sector, as you'll see on the slide in front of you. We currently have 21 organizations that sit on the board. Our one goal is to create a competent, supported, and adequately staffed supply chain workforce that's deployed across the public and private sectors within the health system. Thank you, Dominique, for that introduction to people that deliver and the importance of professionalization of um, supply chain um, managers. Uh, I want to ask now, what has been the work of PTD in defining the competencies of supply chain staff, and particularly those staff, those supply chain professionals who work in immunization supply chains? Well, thank you for that question, Barbara. Um, defining the competencies of supply chain staff was a critical activity of PTD in the early days and remains a priority as we look towards the competencies that the future health supply chain professional needs. The PTD competency compendium and competency framework, which I have on the slide, um, are our foundational documents. They are also the bedrock for the work that WHO and CDC have done as they develop the competencies that are necessary for supply chain professionals working with immunization so what are supply chain management competencies? Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this diagram on the slide. This is the health supply chain cycle and all the components that are needed to have a functioning supply chain. You can break these down to the actual skills that staff need to run supply chains. Here we bring in the PTD competency compendium and competency framework for managers and leaders. They contain the six different domains or groups of competencies that have similar functions. The competencies are the overarching capacity to perform in an area, and we further break it down to behaviors that people can observe to be able to do their jobs in the workplace. Because health supply chains are staffed by different types of workers at different levels of the health system with varying types of education and training backgrounds, there's no single cadre of worker that can be educated and trained to undertake all functions and tasks within a health supply chain. For this reason, we developed a compendium of all competencies, competencies needed within a national health supply chain. Depending on the local context and configuration of the health supply chain, these competencies will be distributed across a range of different workers. This resulting reference document, which is our compendium, can be referred to by countries as they seek to map out the available, available cadres and competencies within their health supply chain and identify gaps or overlaps. The, uh, our, the competency framework can be used for a variety of different ways. Um, we've seen it used to, be, to develop supply chain job descriptions, to perform a training needs analysis or a pre-training assessment of health practitioners. It's been used to develop pre-service education programs and in-service training plans. It can be used for supportive supervision and performance management systems. And it's also been used to design the curriculum of a supply chain management master's degree and leadership development programs, such as the STEP leadership development program I'll speak in a little bit. The competency framework sets out the following domains. We have technical domains, such as selection and quantification, procurement, storage and distribution, and use, use the, which are the competencies workers must have to ensure the best possible outcomes from using the supplies in their work situation where patients are treated. And then there's also two managerial domains, resource management, those competencies workers must have to manage money, people, information, and infrastructure to ensure the system works effectively, as well as professional, personal, 
which are the competencies workers must have to manage their day-to-day -day responsibilities and create a path for future career development. This includes communication, stress management, and time management skills. As I mentioned earlier, we are currently reviewing the competencies required of today's and tomorrow's health supply chain professional and ensuring consistency with the people that deliver theory of change in human resources for supply chain management. Through subject matter expert interviews, we identified approximately 50 competency areas that need to be incorporated into a new competency companion that will be developed in 2020. So as for competencies that supply chain professionals need who work with immunization supply chains, I refer you to the WHO standard competencies framework for the immunization workforce. The United, United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, led a working group of key partners to define these standard competencies. After completion of the first draft, in late 2016, the WHO proposed publishing this standard as normative guidance for countries' immunization programs. In October 2017, WHO convened a group of immunization experts to review and make recommendations on the first draft of domains, work functions, and standard competencies at the national level of the immunization program. You can find the draft document in the link in this slide. The competencies framework links the competencies of the workforce to the objectives of an organization, both for planning and for monitoring. Immunization programs define objectives based on their mission. They determine the attributes that would indicate they are meeting their objectives at an agreed upon level of quality. Based on those attributes, they're able to identify the work functions that are needed to produce quality outputs, as well as the competencies that are needed to do the work. This document can assist immunization programs in revising or developing policies related to, to their workforce, including hiring, staff development, and human resources planning. It looks at attributes, work functions, and competencies. If you want to know more about this, please take a look at the link in the slide. Um, I would also send you to the uh, handy how to use this immunization competencies framework guide, which is also on the WHO uh, site. And then these, um, this is a table that shows the foundational and technical competencies listed in the framework. Great. Um, so, Dominique, from your experience, what are the most effective methods for building supply chain competencies? Well, thank you again for that question, Barbara. Um, I often receive this question based on how best to build supply chain management competencies. And I always say, first you need to understand your competencies. So what's the knowledge, the skills and abilities you need for the job? Then look at, uh, then you need to assess the competency gaps. And then look at the pathways to fill those knowledge gaps, such as through knowledge sharing in communities of practice, such as IPHL or through professional development, pre-service, in-service, or on-the-job training, or through professional accreditation and academic accreditation. So how do you assess competency gaps? There are two individual competency assessments available at this time that are based on the PTD competency framework and six domains. The first one is the employee self-assessment, the Pamela Steele and Associates, PSA, competency self-assessment tool, where employees rate their own ability against a reference standard. It measures technical, management, and leadership competencies covering the six key areas of health supply chain work. It is online and consists 
of a short competency statements that you're asked to rate your abilities on. The questionnaire takes about 30 minutes to complete and we can take it in English, French, Spanish, or Arabic. And then there's the employee proficiency test. The Empower School of Health self-assessment tool for mapping technical competencies where employees undergo an objective exam or test. The assessment determines the procurement and supply management profile of a candidate by asking a series of questions in three areas, educational qualifications, work experience, and domain competency in the state domain. There is also an organizational competency assessment developed by UNICEF, which is the UNICEF Training Needs Analysis Toolkit, which was developed for the immunization supply chain, but the material can also be adapted to other health programs. It offers a structured and sustainable approach to training through detailed skills mapping, analysis, and planning that is country-driven. It is comprised of five modules with approaches, resources, and templates. So once you know the knowledge gap you want to fill, there are different ways of undertaking that. You can do that through professional accreditation, short courses, technical courses, and academic accreditation. But there's also IPHL. You can join a community of practice such, an I, such as IPHL, which currently has uh, 7,611 members from 149 countries. And it is an online forum where members can network, exchange ideas, and improve professional skills. Within the immunization supply chain world, there are also other online communities, such as the Vaccine Procurement Practitioners Network, VPPN. It's an online community and resource for professionals and technical experts supporting national immunization programs in middle income countries. Participants meet to discuss and resolve practical and pressing issues that middle income countries face. For example, establishing methodologies to conduct market assessments, broadening approaches to understand the needs of industry, developing procurement options and strategies, and opting in for vaccine tenders. There is also TechNet 21, which is a global network of immunization professionals committed to strengthening immunization services by sharing experiences, coordinating activities, and helping to formulate optimal policies. TechNet is composed of three complementary parts. There is the TechNet conference, um, there is also policy and guidance formulation, which provides regulations, guidelines, manuals on general procurement. And there's the TechNet website. The website offers a place to share experiences, coordinate activities, and discuss recent developments in immunization. There is news and information on the latest immunization news, jobs and proposal listings. There's a library, a repository of useful journal articles, documents, tools, videos, and such, as well as cold chain equipment, an area for members to submit reviews of WHO PQS pre-qualified products and read the reviews of other members. And then I also wanna bring your attention to the uh, Boost online platform, which will be live in January. I have added a, a survey link in this slide where you can sign up for more information and early access. This is a new online platform for immunization professionals through the Sabin Institute where members can network, exchange ideas, and improve professional skills. As I said, it's managed by the Sabin Institute, which is also developing an, an adaptive leadership development program immunization management. And then professional accreditation. This refers to certification or professional designation 
that allows a person to perform a job or task. Professional accreditation uses a formal process to identify and acknowledge individuals who have met a recognized standard. These are some of the professional associations that provide accreditation. They don't offer a health or vaccine specific professional accreditation, only general accreditation. The SAPEX in South Africa, SIPS for procurement professionals, ASCM, which has the SCORE P certification, CILT, the Humanitarian Logistics Certification Program, and CSCMP, the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals. In some countries, there's also national accreditation organizations. In the case of the Procurement and Supply Professionals and Technicians Board in Tanzania, which is for short PSPTB, all practitioners in supply chain management need to have certification and public organizations are required certification from this board. There's also the Kenya Institute of Supplies Management, KISM, which plays a similar role, a similar role and supply chain professionals are encouraged to be part of it. The common issue for PSPTB and KISM is that registration is not mandatory and enforcement is weak, but we do encourage it. And then there's the uh, short courses, often technical courses provided by the training, by, by different training providers, as you'll see on this slide. For instance, there is the step training program for immunization supply chain managers. And then as far as academic accreditation, uh, a study that we supported in 2016 found that there was 159 supply chain degree or certificate programs that are offered on, offered on the African continent. 39 of these courses offered are at master's or PhD level but there are relatively few health supply chain management degrees. And then I wanted to leave you with this, that being a supply chain management professional means a lifelong learning journey. Thank you, Dominique, for all those amazing resources and suggestions for how to build supply chain competencies. So I wanted to ask um, another question, maybe our final question as we're running out of time. What are examples that you have seen at the country level of successful immunization supply chain teams and how have they developed their competencies and continued to improve their skills? Well, thank you again for that question, Barbara. Uh, I'm gonna give you two uh, country examples today, one from Kenya and one from Vietnam. And I think you'll see there very clearly that it aligns with what you spoke about earlier, where there's a need for shared vision and goals, shared leadership and accountability, continuous learning and development, a customer focus, as well as feedback and data. So the first one is the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, KEMSA, which has been transformed from being an agency to really being an authority which means it is now completely independent from the government. Kemsa has developed a business model under which its customers are no longer solely the government and the donor community, but also the 47 counties in the country. Kemsa has gone through significant operational changes involving both human resources and information technology initiatives. Starting in 2008, Kemsa began a comprehensive process of reform this process, process was accelerated in 2010 by the new constitution of Kenya, which mandated the devolution of healthcare to 47 county governments. This devolution took effect in 2013. During this process, KEMSA underwent a complete overhaul. KEMSA now operates on a supermarket, supermarket model, selling medical supply services to county governments and faith-based institutions institutions using a not-for-profit self-sustaining model. The sale of medical supplies to county government funds, the procurement of further medical supplies, similar to revolving drug fund system. This transformation was accompanied by substantial changes to the legal framework and organizational structure of Kemsa, 
as well as the streamlining of the procurement and distribution process. The success of this business model can be linked to a few different areas. Number one, leadership. There is a clear leadership line in Kenya for public health supply chains. The Minister of Health is a permanent member of the KEMSA board and in charge of ensuring the health system's functions. In terms of technical leadership, this is spread across 400 staff members who have adequate supply chain qualification and training. The board has a mixture of supply chain and pharmaceutical knowledge. The second one is capacity development. An assessment based on the Pamela Steele and Associates Health Supply Chain Skills Competence Assessment Tool has provided insights regarding the capacity of the KEMSA Supply Chain and Logistics Department. Respondents were generally more confident about their generic management skills than their technical skills. On average, managerial skills were rated high, while technical skills were rated average, which shows the results of the efforts made in professionalizing KEMSA staff. This is a continuous effort as staff are provided with training where needed. The third is performance management. Logistics management information systems and ERP systems are the systems used by KEMSA to collect data and performance indicators are based on these data for each employee. The counties are tracked by the sales team and the sales team are rewarded based on their performance. They, the, there are key performance indicators in place to ensure alignment to the strategic plan. The fourth is organizational structure. Meetings are regularly scheduled at different levels and data are the backbone of the conversations. The, prof the professionalization of the supply chain occurs through job evaluation and access to training. Performance appraisal takes place biannually and adjustments to job descriptions follow where needed. And finally, coordination. There is coordination at national and regional level through stakeholder forums, county forums, and technical working groups. The second example I wanna give you is Vietnam. From 2003 to 2012, the Vietnamese government and the National Expanded Program on Immunization, NEPI, decided to invest in immunization cold chain equipment. NEPI was empowered to procure, deliver, and install refrigerators and to redesign the cold chain equipment maintenance system. Vietnam also invested in the capacity of the health workforce to manage corrective and preventive maintenance at all levels of the immunization network. It organized this through four regional collaborating institutes 63 provincial preventive medicine centers, 704 district preventive medicine centers, and 11,200 commune health stations. Vietnam introduced a new strategy for supply chain human resource development that relies on a set of favorable factors. The first one is the national authority leadership to upgrade cold chain equipment for equitable coverage across the country. The second one, government engagement to reform the regulation and, in create, and create an environment that enables innov innovation. The insufficient cold chain equipment capacity for routine immunizations and the introduction of new vaccines was an opportunity for the EPI workforce to propose redesigning the cold chain equipment maintenance system. Third, the political will to accordingly increase manpower's technical capacity because of a new maintenance system. So reinforcing skills of the existing EPI staff, which was based on a competency framework and staff were trained at all levels to use the equipment and undertake preventive maintenance. Two, by creating specialized positions, the government created new specialized positions in the health system. Health technicians and engineers were hired to conduct the preventive and corrective maintenance. And three, outsourcing the corrective maintenance to the private sector. The government contracted and monitored the outsourced maintenance service of 5,000 cold chain equipment the majority which is located in the mountainous and hard to reach communes of the country. 
And then I want to leave you with this. In, in 2015, the EVMA demonstrated that Vietnam achieved or exceeded WHO recommended target level of 80% for each of the nine criteria measured under the EVMA. The average maintenance performance at the primary facilities was reported at 90%. Provincial store performance for maintenance criteria was equal to 92%, and district level maintenance was strong at 88%. Also, the EVMA reported a very low percentage, 4%, of installed equipment that was not functional. And then I want to leave you with, with one final resource. Um, this is the HR country support package for immunization supply chain managers, which you can find um, on the TechNet website. It provides a, a set of tools and guidelines to support and develop immunization supply chain managers to be able to effectively manage their supply chains. So if you want to better understand the status of HR in your immunization supply chain, or there's you want to learn from lessons from other countries or the private sector, or you want to learn how to strengthen your leadership skills and or develop skills and technical competencies to effectively manage your supply chain, then I would take a look at this um, country support package. And I've included the link on this slide for you. Thank you, Dominique. And I will be sending all the links and reference materials that we've mentioned today in the webinar in my follow-up email. Um, we are at the end of the webinar and today we have identified actions a leader should take to set team direction, vision, and to deliver on strategy. We have described some best practices for creating an effect and maintaining effective immunization supply chain team particularly related to shared vision, shared leadership and accountability, continuous learning, a customer focus, and an ability to gather and use feedback and data. Uh, we have just a few minutes to address some questions that came in today. Um, it, the first question is for handling a multidisciplinary team at the grassroots level, is team leader supposed to handle the members or a separate HR or is a separate HR manager essential? Um, well, and, I, and I'll let Dominique answer as well, but I um, think that many times the team can really manage the team within its own membership. The team, the team leader can manage that multidisciplinary team and that the HR manager can provide support um, in terms of following the organization's um, procedures and policies for professional development and, um, and performance review. Um, Dominique, do you have any comments on whether it takes a separate HR manager or whether um, a team leader can um, handle the team members? Um, no, I concur with you, uh, Barbara, that it's the, the team leader that can handle the different members, especially in a multidisciplinary team. Um, Great. Okay. Um, actually, the second question is not a section. It says, uh, I cannot record. We will be sending a recording of this whole webinar to you in the follow-up email. Uh, I would like to thank my guest today, Dominique Zwinkels, for joining us and for enriching the discussion with her experiences and all the examples and the people um, and to under better understand the work that people that deliver is doing. Um, I have mentioned that you'll be getting a follow up email with the links and resources from the webinar and also with a link to the gaming application which where you can refresh your knowledge of the content of today's webinar and compete for the highest score. You will also receive an evaluation form as you exit this webinar to um, rate this particular webinar. We hope you will be able to participate in the next webinar on linking supply chain management to coverage, which will take place on Tuesday, December 17th at 1300 GMT. A registration link for that webinar will be included in the follow-up email. And I would like to thank you all again for joining us today. Best to you all, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.